Welcome to unit 18. We are integrating in spherical coordinates. We have already uh, made headway towards this uh, integration factor which uh, in, is, has to be included here. We have already seen that in spherical, when we use a, a spherical coordinates and we look at the surface area of a sphere, then we have this factor rho square sine phi for the, for the ds. And uh, this is a surface area part, and so the volume, <coughs> this volume element is then just by multiplying by the height, which is d rho. So rho square sinus phi d phi d theta d rho. <coughs> so this is our uh, integration factor, <coughs> which we have to include when we are going into uh, spherical uh, coordinates. And this allows us immediately to compute the uh, volume of a sphere. We look at the sphere again afterwards. So volume of a sphere here. So we have a sphere of radius L. And then we have to integrate over theta. We know that from 0 to 2 pi. And then we have also to integrate of phi from 0 to 0 to pi. And we have also to integrate rho from 0 to l. So what is nice is this sphere, as actually in, in spherical coordinates, it's, it, it's a rectangular region. And then you have the rho square sine phi, d rho, d phi, d theta. And that's no problem to compute, right? That gives us a l cubed third here, sine phi. <coughs> L cubed third times sine phi. Integrating d phi gives us a factor two. We have seen that integral a couple of times and then just multiply by two pi. So this is just two pi times two times L cubed third, which is four pi third L cubed. <clears throat> and that's the formula which Archimedes was so proud of. And uh, we can also understand this uh, with calculus. I mean, if you take the derivative with respect to L, what we get is the surface area. So infinitesimal change of the, of the volume gives us the, gives us the surface area. I just want to say something about the setup here. One can illustrate this when you are cutting melons or whatever you want to do. I, I have here only uh, an avocado. So when the, this is not a sphere also, but uh, you can imagine it's a sphere. And so what we have is we can cut, this is the d phi, right? We change in the phi direction. And then we also change in the theta direction. And what, when I'm cutting inside, I'm also have the d rho. I have here also a 360 degree uh, camera, which is pretty cool. So uh, uh, I can illustrate that also. Uh, belongs to that, belongs to that uh, lecture. And so that's this, uh, that's this uh, fer spherical, spherical uh, wedge, which we have cut out here. And you see here, this is the d rho. And then we have the sine phi, uh, sine phi rho d, uh, f d phi, and then we uh, d theta, and then we have the d uh, rho. Yeah, that's the rho, that's, that's r is equal to, <clears throat> so that's important here. So this is equal to rho sine phi. And then we have the rho as the d phi. Mm. So these spherical wedges are delicious. So this is a, this is the first uh, this is the first section. Remember that integration factor. So we will do an, another uh, computation and then uh, 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 of, of the sphere and then compute something uh, something else. <clears throat>
Moment of inertia is pretty cool. So if you have something turning around, there is an energy, and this energy is computed by taking the angular momentum at the angular velocity squared half times the something like mass, which is the moment of inertia. And they are computing this. So this is a, it's actually a, another toy. It's a serious exercise tool here. So let me just put that in my left hand here. So what we have is, uh, we have the sphere of radius L, hard. So if the sphere of radius L, and then we integrate from over the sphere. So this is a, this is the sphere. And we integrate x squared plus y squared. This is called i. So this is the moment of inertia. Wow, it almost kills your hand. But that's a good exercise. It's a fantastic exercise. And uh, so this is the, the, the called the moment of inertia. And uh, it would be completely impossible to do that in Cartesian coordinates. So we really need to, we need to do that in spherical coordinates. And so what we do is we, we use spherical coordinates. So that's what we have, 0 to 2 pi, and then the 0 to pi, 0 to L, it's the same setup like before. And then we have d rho, d phi, d theta. Now what is this here? <clears throat> so this is r square, which is a rho square sine square phi. So we have rho square sine square phi. And then we have also, don't forget, we have also uh, the integration factor, rho square sine phi. So when you look at that, so this is the integration factor. So in statistics, you might be interested in a, a get get a multivariate distribution, which kind of expo is exponentially. In statistics, you might be interested in some multivariate distribution which exponentially decays like this. It's kind of a three-dimensional bell curve, uh, bell density. And uh, so what happens here, we want to know what this is. So we want to scale it so that it's a probability density function. So that it produces us a probability one as a, as a total thing. So so this is a, 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 a problem. And uh, this is very nice in, in, in spherical coordinates. In spherical coordinates, we just integrate from 0 to 2 pi, 0 to pi, and then from 0 to infinity. And this is just rho square. That's important. So e to the minus rho square. And then we have this integration factor rho square sine phi. d rho d phi d theta. <coughs> Now, uh, we can do the angle integration quickly. So 0 to pi sinus phi, that gives us just pi. This gives us 2 pi. So this is pi. And then we have that integral. That's a little bit of a challenge. e to the minus rho square, rho square, d rho. <clears throat> now, uh, it's, it, it's a little bit challenging because you're, you're, you're taught to use you know, integration by parts. Here, but if you if you differentiate that, you cannot integrate that. So you, you, if you differentiate that, you integrate that, you get in a, you, it's getting even worse. So uh, what we have to do here is to have an idea. It's a pretty cool cool problem, and uh, what you can do is kind of uh, use it use, use the following thing: uh, e to the minus rho square rho. This we can integrate, and then uh, d rho. So that's a trick because we can integrate this 
we can integrate that and we can differentiate that. This when we integrate is just e to the minus rho square half. Right, this we can integrate, this we differentiate. So when we integration by parts, that gives us just the uh, e to the minus rho square half times rho, we have not yet differentiated, mi minus, minus, there's a minus sign here. I have to write a little bit nicer. So this is a minus, and then uh, a plus, because we now integrate, we integrate from zero to infinity again. So this goes from zero to infinity. We integrate this times the derivative, which is one. So it's uh, e, e to the minus rho square half. The minus minus has gone zero here, times one d rho. <coughs> So now uh, we are actually fine because that's zero here. It is zero because when we plug in zero, we get zero. When we plug in infinity, it's getting zero. So that's zero here. So this gives us just, just write it here because that's the camera is hiding this here. So what we have is, we have the, we have the, that's equal to integral from zero to infinity e to the minus rho square d rho. Now this we have done, that's the uh, gifted movie. <coughs> Remember? A little girl in the gifted movie has done that. When we take from minus infinity to infinity, that's just one half square root of pi. So that's it, so that's it, so that's uh, the thing. So in this case, the whole thing is just two pi times pi times one half square root of pi. This is pi <coughs> square. Pi to the three half. Hmm. Pretty cool. So it's actually pretty cool. So what we have is actually the integral from minus infinity to infinity e to the minus uh, rho x squared dx. That was the square root of pi minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity, e to minus x squared minus y squared. That's the square, that's the, that's pi. And what we have here, e to the minus x squared minus y squared minus c squared, dx dy dz, is actually the cube root of pi, uh, pi to the three half. So in every dimension, we just multiply by the square root of pi. And that's of course clear because what you do here, this is actually also a product of three such things. So we did a little bit of uh, waste of computation, but it's so much fun to compute in, in, uh, in, in, in spherical coordinates. So that's not, that's not so bad. <laughs>